Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and explored this date picker dialog. You can see all the code here behind me. Uh, if you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right, but basically we're able to just select any date from this system dialog here. When we click OK, we just output basically what we have. Uh, we worked with a calendar, a simple date format, and we're just kind of managing all the data and formatting it appropriately under the hood. And in today's video we're going to explore the time picker dialog at least I believe that's what it's called, um, to basically allow the user to select a particular time you know, of day uh, to kind of go with this you know, December 15th, 2021 kind of idea, basically uh, getting more information out of the user. So uh, smash that like button. We're going to get started here. And please consider subscribing if you are brand new. So a flow that I've kind of thought of, and I think it's kind of common, at least just trying to think about how some apps do it, right? Once you select a particular time, a particular date, excuse me, then the time picker comes up, right? It's not like you have to click multiple UI elements or, or you know, here's the date and then, okay, I'm going to click something else to open up the time picker. So we can actually kind of automatically bring up that time picker dialog if we just run it in this on date set function, right? Um, so here we can see that the user has to click on a UI element in order to run this date picker dialog. But we can kind of just do things for them automatically to kind of just make it a better UX, a better flow. So let's go ahead and let's see, yeah, it is called the time picker dialog. I kind of just guessed that based on the, the date picker one, uh, but I assume this is going to work extremely similar. Uh, and yes, just looking at these constructor arguments here, that does seem to be the case, right? I think we're interested in this first one that has a context, a listener, and then we have the hour of day, minute, and then a Boolean to say, is it in 24 hours? Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this as we would expect. We're gonna go with this. We will then say this is our dialogue, uh, or sorry, our listener, which we'll have to update in a moment, and this I mean our activity. Uh, and then we have hour of day and uh, minute and all that kind of stuff. So we can actually, kind of do what we did up here where we fetch that information out of the calendar instance. Again, if you missed it in the last episode, we kind of talked about why a calendar is so important here uh, and works just so well with a date picker. And then as we're finding out here, also a time picker one. Um, we're just gonna set it to false for now. Uh, and then we'll, maybe we'll see how that looks as far as uh, if we set it to true for that 24 hour clock. So uh, hour of day instead of year, we're gonna go with hour of day. Isn't that nice? And then this one here is just minute. Okay, all we need to do here, this is screaming at us because we do not implement the time picker, right? Uh, as far as the interface there to receive some information. So we have the time picker dialog dot on time set listener. Uh, and now our activity is complaining because we have not uh, implemented that function. We can very easily, I'm on Windows here, just did control I and that brings up the implement members. I believe control O opens up the override members uh, little window here for the different functions. So if you're wondering where that shortcut came from, uh, that's where it comes from. All right, and then as we see here on time set looks extremely similar to the on date set, right? It gives us the view in case we need it for some reason. Seems like it is nullable for another reason. Uh, and then we just get the info that we actually need here, right? Which is just pretty helpful, pretty, pretty, pretty helpful. Um, so why don't we just stick this information inside of our calendar like we've been doing? Uh, however, instead of calling, well, at least in this last line here, we were able to set the year month day of month very easily. As far as there was just a function to support that, there's not really the same one uh, for just setting the time, right? There is, There are these ones that allow you to do that where you can set the year, month, date, hour, minute, and second. Uh, but inside of this block of code here, we only have the hour and the minute. In order to get the year, month, and day of month, we're gonna have to do something like this. So it kind of feels a little, I don't know, a little clunky. Maybe it's not the most attractive thing to look at. So we're actually gonna go ahead and uh, change something or use a different function here, right? So we can basically use this first one where we can define a field to set and then the actual value we wanna set, right? So here, if we just say hour of day, we're just gonna copy that. Um, then we can say hour of day. We'll duplicate this line here and instead we'll just do uh, minute and then we will do 
uh, the minute that's passed in here to the on time set function. And a little bit of cleanup that we can do here, we have some kind of duplicate lines here, right? Calendar.set, we can make this a little bit more Kotlin-y, right? By doing, uh, making use of our handy dandy apply block. So let's just go ahead and cut this in, or cut that out, we'll paste it in, and then this is one of my favorite things in the IDE. I believe uh, Alt J on Windows, Control G on Mac. You can actually go ahead and highlight something and then uh, continue to press that to get more selections of what you've just highlighted. So we can just delete both of those lines at once or at least both of those characters at once. And so now this is kind of sexy Kotlin, right? Let's say calendar.apply, we're setting the hour, we're setting the minute. Once this block finishes, that timestamp thing has kind of uh, or sorry, the, the calendar has been updated. So the last little bit here that we ran into last time is that we actually need to kind of display this information. So we can say calendar uh, dot time in millis, and uh, this will display a formatted date wonderfully. We've already seen that work in the last episode. Again, if you missed it, let's check it out. But we are not going to be displaying it, let's say, right? Because we don't have uh, anything in our pattern to actually tell this formatter here to actually how to handle and how to display the time component of that timestamp, right? The hours and the minutes and that kind of stuff. So I think I remember here, we can kind of just do, yeah, I think, I think this will be, well, we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, but I think this is how you can des describe the hours. Uh, and then you can describe the minutes here, like, Lowercase hh has something to do with the 24 hour clock and capital HH is the other way around, right? The, just the 12 hour clock. And then this A is to show an AM or PM at the end of it. Um, so let's see how this flow works, right? We're gonna go ahead, uh, let's select, let's select Wednesday because I think that's when I'm gonna push this video out. Uh, and then right afterwards, all right. So a few issues here. We selected the same, the right date. Now we've given it a way to actually show the time. Uh, and I was incorrect here. This means 24 hours. So let's go with that one. And that's going to be the 12 hour clock, right? Because, uh, I mean, I have everything in a 24 hour clock, but you know, 1444 PM, I mean, the PM is implied, right? Because it's after 12. This, this is hilarious. I, um, did not call dot show on there, right? Simple mistake, very easy to fix, uh, but it was getting the time from the fact that our uh, calendar.get instance, when that runs, it basically snaps, you know, a snapshot of that, uh, the timestamp, and it'll use that for everything as far as month, day, year, minute, all that stuff. So once we go ahead and select it, boom, we can actually see this now very nice looking, very familiar facing, um, you know, instance of this time selection. Um, so let's go ahead and just, you know, 12, 15 PM. Sure. And now we are capturing everything. We're setting it appropriately. Uh, and we print it out. We format it as we would expect. We go ahead and click on it again. We'll see that April 13th is selected already, right? Because we are fetching that info out of the calendar, uh, which we've already updated every time the date, uh, kind of ran, right? Or every time the on date was set. Um, so let's go ahead and just change it to the six, let's say. And now the same thing is happening here in the time picker, right? We have 12, 15 PM. And that was again, because we set our calendar instance with the hour and the minute. It's obviously not 12, 15 PM when I'm recording this, it's uh, 247, you know, but we changed it to some particular time. And then now um, when it reruns, we tell the uh, time picker dialogue here, we tell it to get the hour and the minute out of our calendar, which we've already updated, right? So this whole thing just kind of synchronizes together. It's really, really simple and straightforward, right? I mean, there's really one, two functions that you need to override in order to actually uh, kind of handle the different inputs, creating the date picker, creating the time picker um, dialogues themselves and just calling show very, very simple stuff. Again, we are just doing this inside of an activity, but realistically, you can launch this in a fragment. You can launch, you can have the, the listener be a fragment. You could even have the listener be uh, some object here, right? That extends the time picker dialog dot on set. And then you override this function here. And now this is the listener that's going to be invoked. So you don't have to actually have it um, declared for your activity or for your fragment. You know, you can just create an instance of this time uh, time set listener or the date set listener, and you can just go ahead and use that one instead. 
Uh, I just I'm gonna keep it simple and just have it be this and then our activity implements that interface that it needs to receive the time updates, right? So 7.30 a.m., you know, reasonable time to wake up and we can go ahead and see uh, exactly that. You could play around with all this formatting here with basically just this, right? None of your code has to change at this point. Uh, all, you, all you have to do is change this kind of deal. You know, if you wanted to even add like, let's say seconds, you know, you can add uh, seconds at the end of it. I guess we'll rerun it and then we'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward to actually get a time and a date and, and, and work with it appropriately. Uh, six o'clock PM. And so you could see six o'clock PM, seven fifty-seven seconds. Great, super, super interesting, useful stuff. So uh, thank you guys for making it this far in the video. I really appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you are brand new. Consider dropping me a like. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if this has been helpful. I really hope it has. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.